Hi there, Simon from SimonWood.com. So this is part two of uh, my set of eight wines that I'm uh, going to be showing off to the good fo folk uh, somewhere in Saddleworth later tonight. Uh, but um, let's see if I've got them in the right order. Uh, so if, if you missed the first video, go and have a look at it. But uh, there are four whites there. I've got four reds here. The idea is half of them from supermarkets, half of them from a, a me friend, a local wine merchant. Thank you, Julian. Um, and let's see how we get on. Starting with Sainsbury's uh, Marsamino. Uh, Marsamino. I mean, the, the idea of the, the, this tasting is uh, that it's um, it's things that maybe aren't are on people's regular radar. So uh, I've got four grape varieties that, um, yeah, once you get past Cabernet and Merlot, Chardonnay and Sauvignon, uh, what do you find next? So this is uh, their Sainsbury's own label. Taste the difference. Marsamino del Venezia 2010. Well, this smells fun. Uh, it's interesting that of the eight wines that I've got, five of them are oak-free. Uh, I, I see people sh using oak just for oak's sake sometimes, and uh, this is a welcome oak-free wine. I think oak would have smothered this because it's quite it's quite pale in colour, quite a delicate um, uh, fruit flavour, but it's got these rather interesting floral uh, marzipan-like characters as well. Uh, it smells like it's almost one of those wines that you could chill, and so um, I, I don't know if they, they recommend anything like that. No, it doesn't say anything like that. So it actually does say serve lightly chilled with a buttery or creamy pasta. Um, I probably wouldn't mind that at all. So anyway, let's give it. A t let's taste it and see whether there's life beyond those lovely cherries. Um, it, it cher it's almost like cooked cherries. You know, what, what's it called? Clafoutis, that uh, that uh, that um, sponge cake that's got cherries in there. If you imagine that, if you've slightly undercooked the sponge cake and maybe there's a little bit of almonds in the, in the in the sponge it's got that sort of character I'll shut up and taste it thoroughly charming wine light fresh classic summer red wine um, because it's refreshing it's got abundant fruit it's got this joyful red berry red cherry character and then this nuttiness this um, this um, marzipan like character and um, maybe complexity isn't its forte, but enjoyability it scores very highly on that, and uh, I could um, I could be happy with that. Let's see whether I'm happy with the uh, second wine, which is Encanto uh, Mencia Roble Biezzo. Four words on there, which uh, to most people might be um, difficult to get there. And there. Their mind round. Encanto. Uh, something to do with singers. I don't know whether, whether it's, it's got anything on there. Uh, but uh, Menthea is the grape variety. Uh, Roble, uh, well, Biezzo is the region it comes from. So Biezzo is a, a place in uh, in Galicia, uh, in, in northwestern Spain. And Roble means it's been in oak. Uh, Roble means, uh, it, yeah, oaked. Does it say how long it's been in oak? Uh, three months in French and American oak. I'm always a bit wary when people have something in oak for such a short time because uh, what I find is that uh, you put the uh, the wine into the barrel and in the first few months it picks up all the oak flavours and doesn't actually benefit from the uh, uh, from the gentle softening that goes on the longer you leave it in a barrel. Let's have a sniff and see whether I'm... Uh, uh, my suspicions are correct or wrong. I think I'm probably just about right uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of the people tonight love it for precisely the reasons that I'm sort of not quite so sure. Um, I'd almost have said leave it unoaked or leave it in an older barrel for a lot longer. Um, so I'm getting that soft smokiness, um, the, the ever so slightly sawdusty oak, but behind there there's a quite fine uh, fragrant uh, red fruit character. Um, Menthea is a great variety. Reminds me of, uh, I suppose maybe a cross between Cabernet Franc uh, with its leafy black currant character and Syrah, uh, Syrah from cool climates with its uh, peppery berry edge. So I'm getting a little bit of those, but at the moment uh, I want that oak just to calm down a little bit. But um, uh, I've got a couple of hours before the tasting, so maybe come the tasting it'll be, uh, it'll be Encanto, it'll be singing. Or am I getting my uh, language wrong and it should, it's enchanted? Because uh, um, uh, canto is it's something to do with singing, but uh, chanting and uh, I suppose it's the difference between chanting and enchanting. Oh, dear me. But the wine itself, uh, yes, I do find, uh, I, 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 do, I do notice the character of that oak, but I also notice the freshness of the fruit. Uh, we're quite close to the Atlantic here, so, uh, uh, so whereas some of the wines from inland Spain get... Um, maybe sometimes a little bit too rounded, ruddy and hearty. Here there's still the, a, a bit of breezy freshness about it. So the fruit's fresh, uh, there's a spiciness and bounce to it, and, uh, and then there's this oak. 
So, we would be fascinated to see how that goes down tonight. I imagine it's going to be one of those split rooms. Half of it says, love it. Half of it say, mm, not so sure. And it'll all be, also be interesting to find out whether that oak has calmed down in the, uh, uh, in the next couple of hours. Hey, uh, we are now going off to Argentina with the Dante Rubino winery and uh, the grape variety here, Bonada. Um, so uh, that's the point of unfamiliarity here. I mean, we, we, we've got used to Argentine Malge Malbec, but the Bonada grape, well, it's one of those that uh, Arge Argentina's had for uh, quite a long time, and uh, it's had all these Italian immigrants uh, uh, who settling there, and Bonada is an Italian grape variety, also known in uh, Italy as Croatina. But suspicions are that the Bonada that they call Bonada in Italy is not the same as the Bonada that they call Bonada in, um, in Argentina. And they think that the Bonada here might be the same as the grape that they have in California called Charbono. Oh, too many grapes, too many worlds, not enough meals over which to polish them off. I'll shut up and sniff. Well, there's a warm, rich, rounded earthiness about this. Uh, and it smells like it's got that savoury Italian character. It's funny, I use this word Italianity. Uh, there are some characteristics that you get in certain countries' wines. Uh, I, I use Portugosity uh, and Italianity. And so here, there is that mixture of the, the uh, rounded, ever so slightly mushy cooked fruit and a savoury uh, a, a savory element, ever so slightly meaty, but not, uh, not fully meaty. And I get that. Uh, it smells like it's not going to be young and brash like some Argentinian wines can be. Uh, it smells like it's going to be rounded and rich, but um, with a few stories to tell. And I like that savoury warmth. There's like a toasty uh, character coming through. There's this um, quite plush fruit, plummy, uh, there's plums, blackberries, um, and... Um, in, in the, the, I, I notice a slightly charred character. Um, if you've ever cooked a blackberry crumble and you've had those bits that have, it, it, you've slightly overcooked the top. So instead of it being uh, uh, maybe a harmonious beige colour, uh, there's a few little burnt bits. But then when you come to scrape it out, uh, there are some baked fruit bits that have stuck to the edge. Get a little bit of that baked berry edge here. Um, but um, overall, it, it's a nice mix of richness and it has got a bit of freshness coming through as well. And this plush, savoury character on the finish. Very nice. Um, let's see whether the final one is uh, very nice. It must be nice because it's got a whale on the label. Uh, Southern Rite Pinotage um, and wine of origin Walker Bay. Uh, Southern Rite is a label from the Hamilton Russell Winery. And I think Hamilton Russell, under their own label, they only do... Uh, I think they only do Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Southern Rite is their sister label, and I think they do Sauvignon and Pinotage, and do they do some other things? I'm not sure. But um, they do, they, they have got a more, um, I, I don't know whether it qualifies as being from the same winery, but they, they also do uh, a, a, a very a top-end Pinotage called Ashbourne. This is its little brother. Now, Pinotage, if you don't know it, that's, again, that's the unusual point here. Uh, it's probably the most familiar of the grape varieties that, uh, uh, that, that, that's in this lineup. Uh, but it's a mix, it's a crossing between Pinot Noir, uh, the great grape of Burgundy, and uh, what they used to call Hermitage, or Hermitage, in South Africa. Uh, nothing to do with Hermitage in the Rhone. This is a grape called Sanso. Uh, so they crossed the two, they made beautiful music, and then they produced this slightly odd bastard child, uh, which... Um, well, some versions are, are very, very good, uh, and some versions... Well, there, there was a trip by uh, to South Africa by a group of the Institute of Masters of Wine sometime in the... I think it was the 80s, and they described it as rusty nails. Yes, there are some wines that fall into those rusty nail characters ca uh, categories, but um, there are others that are, that are fabulous and age brilliantly. I mean, for me, one of the things is it's a great variety, so just because it has been developed in one particular country doesn't mean it's going to grow everywhere in that country well. Uh, what they've found is that maybe some of the places it's been planted have been a little bit on the warm side, so um, uh, we're down in uh, Walker Bay. Are we down in Walker Bay here? Yeah. Uh, so, cooler end of uh, South African uh, vineyards, and um, so, uh, and it seems to be, it, it seems to be putting a, more of an accent on um, its parentage here. So here I notice some of the um, 
uh, the, the gentle cherry and raspberry fruit of Pinot Noir, but with some of the earthiness of the Rhone, uh, which, where, where the where Sanso is more the southern Rhone than uh, the, the northern Rhone, but the, there is some of that earthy charm here. It smells good. It smells like it's going to be quite rich, but again, not over the top. It's got a little bit of what I call the South African bake at the background, but it's in the background rather than taking centre stage, which is how it should be. And it really is the Pinot Noir edge that's coming through most strongly there. Um, it's got this, uh, yeah, this juicy cherry, the raspberry, bit of the earthy undergrowth character. Um, there's this, this, this smoky spice, the what I call the cape character, uh, very uh, there, but in the background. And there's this little bit of um, volatility, um, giving. Uh, well, Pinotage has got this um, character that some, some people call bananas. Some people say, oh, it's acetone. If you imagine that little edge of nail varnish, there's a touch of that there. But again, it's not taking centre stage. It's in the background, and it's more this juicy, rounded, um, red fruited Pinot plummy ruddiness that's to the fore. Uh, I like that, uh, and uh, but I, strong, I have a strong feeling that when I come to do the tasting tonight, maybe I'll swap those two round because uh, uh, the uh, the banana is maybe a little bit sturdier, fleshier, rounder, and half a degree higher in alcohol. But um, interesting set of four wines, uh, and uh, I'll be very interested to see how they go down tonight. In the meantime, I will see you, I will love you, and leave you.